Well, well okay. Okay. Well, good, hello to hello. all. I was going to say good afternoon, Hi. but... Hello. Hi, Mike. <laughs> this Hi. is my Hi. first time to meet you, and it's a real yeah. pleasure. And, and really, it's like I know you because I've been following what you do, your work, and I've been seeing you in, in, in many places online, so it really it feels really like we've met before. Well, Which that's is, so kind, and I'm really happy to have you on board. That's yes. a real uh, pleasure and honor, and I'm so um, looking forward to hearing you on the panel today. Well, um, me too. So how about that? How about that? Okay. I introduce Vance. Vance introduces Claire. Claire <laughs> introduces... No, no. <laughs> I'm going to just introduce all of you here. Um, uh, let me just uh, thank you all for being there for all of us and for kindly sharing your expertise and wisdom, words of wisdom here, because everybody here is freaking out, not sure what to do about their own teaching and their own classes um so that is well appreciated this let me just is really exposing that and the yeah. insights people have been sharing have been just incredible uh, those videos are really? going to be a real treasure i think so i think so i'm i'm really touched by each and every experience i learn everything in every single session okay there is that one thing that i'm walking away with it doesn't have to be like, you know, uh, new knowledge about like high tech. This is not about that. It's about us as human beings, us as learners, lifelong learners, as well as teachers. So I'm so grateful, really. So do I have to introduce Vance again? Because I introduced him yesterday. What do you think? Yes. Yeah, I think yes. Our host, <laughs> the one and only Vance Stevens, okay? who never say, says no to a web head uh, in need of help and support. Uh, remember when I said um, web heads in action, learning together is the home for creativity. All right, so back to the proper introductions. Van Stevens is the founder of Web Heads in Action. Um, and um, you are on the editorial board of Tessel EG, yeah, right? I, uh, I'm on the on the yep. on the internet editor for the last 20 years or so okay mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. you host pod podcasts um learning together uh mm -hmm. podcasts and it's like on and off but now it's like 500 episodes if not more tonight and is now 494 okay <laughs> you're you're so accurate with numbers it really uh makes me feel like you know uh, I'm not that, okay, uh, I don't know. I'm not that good with numbers, you see. It's just the qualitative side of things. Anyways, so um, you serve as Tiesel Kali as Electronic Village Online as a coordinator and session moderator. Mm -hmm. um, editorial board uh, member of Call Journal, mm -hmm. and you've received the 2019 Call Research Conference Lifetime Achievement Award you received it virtually, and let me repeat that again. Okay, I can just, you know, give you one of those, like, you know, tokens and flowers, hand them to you, Vance. You received them now virtually, please. Yeah, I, I couldn't go to the conference, but I had registered for it, so they went ahead and awarded it to me and let me uh, receive it in, uh, uh, in Zoom or Skype, I can't remember which. Uh, okay. Yeah. So we're going to hear first from Claire Braden Siskin, Claire Siskin, I guess she prefers to be called. That's what it says on her uh, on her uh, nameplate there. And she's a consultant, teacher trainer, practitioner of computer assisted language learning. And she has 20 years of experience at least as an instructor of ESL, EFL. She's past chair of the Cal Interest section in TESOL. I am too, by the way. I was one. Of, I was the first, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. first officially appointed. She has a strong mm -hmm. interest in international education and has given presentations in 24 countries. And we have Mr. Mike Contreras over here, Dr. Mike Contreras, sorry, but we call him Mike. I mean, anyway, he's, he has a privately owned uh, language school in Greece. Uh, he believes in engaging his learners, so he says in his blurb, through the use of active learning spaces and Caltech technology as a tool to succeed in achieving learning outcomes. 
and his current research interests include gamification in EFL schools and of course flipped learning and of course hybrid learning which he's going to talk about this evening. So we have here a document which all our documents have tiny URLs and Claire to answer your question you could put the link in there at your leisure to your presentation and you can reach this document anybody can by going to summit uh, that is tinyurl.com summit 2020 panel and that will take you uh, right Vance, here yes Vance, can I interject here can I put the actual PowerPoint there or just the link if it's actually a PowerPoint, no, but if you can okay. put it up on Google, she, uh, okay, Google okay. Slides and you can I'll, put the I'll link I'll figure there. it out. You could even okay. embed it there if you wanted. I think I'll go old fashioned and people can email me if they want to get a copy okay. of it. <laughs> okay, anyway, basically uh, this is a navigable document and um, I talked about the panelists just now, the speakers, bios and photos and all that, and we're going to talk about, this is what we're going to do, we're going to if you click here, you can go to the speaker's notes. You can go back to the navigation hub if you want, and you can go back to wherever you want to go. So uh, I like the way Google, Google Docs lets you navigate through its documents. So, uh, Claire, should we go right into what you have to say? She's, oh, I should tell, let me overview. Claire is going to talk to us about autonomous learning, and that we think that's the crux of everything. You know, autonomous learning is really the root of all the hybrid teaching and the blended learning and all that. Your, your students have to be able to take some responsibility for their learning. And I'm going to talk about blended learning as a precursor to emergency remote teaching, which is a, pa a time we've passed now. Mike is stuck in the new normal, which is, uh, I could probably have, oh, here we go, I just passed over. He's going to talk about hybrid classrooms, and that's where uh, you go beyond blended learning and you go to where some students are in the class and some are not in the class and that's a really a, a completely different ball of wax. So Claire, uh, we, we're, we're going to take I think about uh, 15, 20 minutes each and we have a 10 or 20 minute question and answer at the end of this. So uh, I put times here by the way. So in the in this, uh, uh, if we go back up to Claire's part. Okay, so Claire, uh, she has almost half an hour. She, anyway, uh, I thought we were going to start at 13.10, so we're early, aren't we? Okay, so anyway, um, well, if, you, if anyway, say what you want, Claire, and we'll see where we end up, and I'll try to be sure and finish uh, by um, whatever my time is, uh, by, oh, that's my part. 13.10 is my part. Sorry, Claire's part is oh. already eight minutes oh, into so it. Oh, so we're behind, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, well, well I, anyway, here we go. Okay, I don't know how we work, figure this stuff out. Okay. I doubt if I need that much time. Okay, yeah, can okay. you unshare Can you unshare your screen? Sure. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. And I'll share my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, for my PowerPoint. Okay, can you all see the PowerPoint? We can. Good, okay. So, moving right along. Let's see. Ah, I think I'm not in... Yeah, okay. Uh, I've been doing quite a bit of reading about autonomous learning recently, and so I put together a web page. It's in that Google Docs that Vance was showing you, but that's the URL. I'll also include that at the end if, if you need to see that. Just various resources and uh, things that I may be referring to uh, during this talk. Okay, basically right now you know we've got the virus, we're teaching at the distance. Uh, I feel isolated, okay, I think our students feel really isolated, uh, and whether we like it or not, our students have to do a lot by themselves, that's just, that's just the way it is. They have to become autonomous learners, uh, and this of course has to do with self-directed independent learning, taking charge of their own learning and being responsible for their own learning. Okay, is this an opportunity? I don't know. Uh, the previous speaker was saying that a lot of people are now getting turned on to online teaching who were not before. That's a good thing. This may also be a, an opportunity for our students. Uh, there is some research showing that some students actually do better with online learning because they don't have the distraction of their classmates. I think others are doing a lot worse because their teachers don't know what to do, their parents don't know what to do. But apparently there, there is a small, maybe growing percentage of students who are actually doing better. 
Okay, I'm going to be referring to CALL, Computer Assisted Learn Language Learning. Some people prefer to use ICT or TEL, te Technology Enhanced Language Learning, or VANCE's acronym. Are you still using this, VANCE? Social, Social Media Assisted Learning, because I think... Exactly, yeah. I, I couldn't... I knew, I knew VANCE would be here, so I couldn't leave that out. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, I, I think CALL... Uh, uh, Hana said that we were going to be talking about we don't necessarily have to be talking about new ideas, and some of the things I'm going to be mention are, mentioning are very old ideas indeed, but I think there are some advantages when students are working by themselves, call can have some advantages, and I'm not going to mention all the advantages, but just a few of the more salient ones, okay? Repetition, students can repeat and review, okay? Repetition is the mother of learning, okay? They can learn at their own pace, okay? They don't have to be in lockstep with what... Uh, what their classmates are doing. I'm going to stop and get some water. Students have direct access to authentic materials through the internet, newspapers, menus, train schedules, plane schedules, shopping, etc. With social media, students may find opportunities to use English outside their classes. To me, this is one of the most exciting things. Uh, I'm a speaker of Portuguese because I lived in Portugal and just about every day now I read Portuguese and I even write some Portuguese in small amounts and that's a, that's an amazing advantage I think. Uh, one goal is that students are actually producing language and generating language not just reading it passively and consuming it. Uh, with Google Docs or other tools they can create their own text and share them. Uh, feedback they get all they can get all kinds of interactive language practice through feedback it may not be good feedback, but at least it's some feedback, better than nothing. Okay, other advantages have to do with links that give definitions, uh, pronunciation perhaps, translations. They can track their progress. A translation may, be, uh, may not be seen as an advantage by everybody. We all know of the pit, pitfalls of that. Okay, uh, students may, if we help them, gain a sense of confidence. Oh, I can do this by myself. Okay, however, teachers do worry, and I've, I've been hearing this for over 35 years, I guess. If students are learning without me, what if they don't need me? Well, I don't think you have to worry about that. I think they still need their teachers. Uh, on the negative side, okay, I think there are some, definitely some negative aspects. A lot of materials are poorly designed. I hear this over and over from teachers, and my response to this is always, well, look at the textbooks, the printed textbooks, also have errors, also have problems with design. Okay, uh, Vance is going to disagree with me about this, but I, I love free materials. Free is great, but they may not be the best. They may be of low quality. They may have distracting ads. If they waste our students' time, they aren't really free. So I think we have to look at more. Uh, oh, he's nodding his head. Maybe he doesn't. Oh, we'll yeah. talk about that later. Uh, sir, yeah. I, I share everything I do. Any, anything I do, I, I give to everybody free of cost. But I don't think that just because something is free that it's necessarily the best thing to give our students. Okay, uh, students by themselves don't always know how to choose the best materials. And that's where the role of the teacher comes in to help them do that. Okay, authentic materials c can have a big disadvantage. If it's so difficult and that they can't understand it at all, they're not going to be motivated. It's very demotivating. So this is where the role of the teacher comes in, to curate the materials and help them with this. Uh, everybody loves multimedia. I love multimedia. I love including audio and video and pictures as much as possible. But that does not guarantee better learning by itself. Uh, it can be distracting. Learners may not take advantage of it just because you have a sound file. Are the students really going to listen to that? So we don't know. OK, feedback may not be helpful at all. A, B, C, I'm going to choose C. Yes, correct. What, to, what have I learned there? Maybe nothing. That has not necessarily taught me anything. Okay, so I'll say again, teachers have to help students take advantage of the benefits of, of online learning. Uh, when, the, when the pandemic started, I put together a page. Excuse me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, I put together a page called Study English by Yourself. It has links to a bunch of free materials. Everything there is free. 
You don't have to register for anything, and there are very few ads. I think a couple of the pages do have ads, but they're very minimal type ads. So this is something you may want to check out for yourself. Some of these materials are very easy and basic, and others are more difficult. But that's something you might want to check out and see if anything there is of use to your students. This page is linked from that first page that I gave you. Okay, now how can we encourage our students to be autonomous learners? Okay, I think we have to give them as many choices as we can. Instead of saying, do this, do this, do this, we have to give them choices. Uh, I recently took an online course myself. And one, one thing that I really liked about it was that in every single lesson, every single unit, there were choices. We, we had to do assignments, we had to do tasks. And some, we had to read things and comment on them and summarize them and react to them in various ways. Some of the readings were not very interesting to me. Others were very interesting. And in this, this course was designed in such a way that I could decide what to do. I, I could figure out what was more, most relevant for me. And I like that a lot. And I think teachers need to do more of that. Okay, uh, we have to realize that tasks take longer if you do them online. Many tasks do. We may have to give students more time. We have to be uh, understanding of how long it takes them to do tasks. Okay, we need to use various modes of communication, not just written text, but pictures, audio, video, and incorporate those as much as possible. Uh, we need to be really careful that our instructions are clear and consistent. If we're in a, a traditional classroom, if somebody doesn't get it, we can go around and help that student. But if they're at a distance, we have to be even more careful than usual that, that they understand what we want them to do, what we expect them to do. Okay. Uh, I think we should give them as much personal feedback as we can, since the computer generated feedback may not be that useful. Okay, autonomous doesn't have to be I mean alone. I think social interaction is still very important and we can give them assignments where they're using social media and interacting with other learners in different ways. Uh, I wanna talk a little bit about learning management systems. I, I think it was Vance who commented we're finding out what teachers know and what teachers don't know. And there seems to be a big confusion about various tools, okay? The LMSs, the learning management systems, are things like Google Classroom, Canvas, Moodle, uh, Edmodo, all of us have our favorites. Uh, web conferencing tools, that's what we're doing now. We're using Zoom. Uh, Google Meet, which used to be Google Hang Hangout, it's basically the same tool. Uh, Cisco WebEx, Webinar Jam. I've used all of these in, in the last few weeks. These are very different. Uh, the LMSs are basically online courses where a teacher can go and put materials, have discussions, give tasks, etc. Uh, web conferencing tools are where we're all meeting together as we are now. Uh, the main difference here is that the LMSs are mostly asynchronous. We're not, students are working independently. They're not working all at the same time. Although some of them do have tools built in where they could have uh, synchronous chat or conferencing. The web conferencing tools are more like a traditional classroom. They're synchronous, okay? Many, many, uh, at least in the United States, many, many parents are complaining because the students are sitting all day in Zoom sessions and just sitting there staring at, at Zoom all day. Uh, I, I would say don't try to do everything as a synchronous classroom. Give students assignments that can be done offline. There's a, uh, in, on the web page, there's an article about that. You can take a look at that, about how we're giving students more responsibility if they're doing their own assignments and not just sitting there staring at a Zoom screen uh, or a Google Meet screen. Uh, so I would say use an LMS if you can. Uh, most teachers don't have any choice about what they use there school or campus decides for them. If you don't have one at your school, use Edmodo because it's free and everybody can use that one. Uh, basically, the LMXs are, are very teacher-centered tools, okay? But they can be set up so that learners have choices as in the course that I just took. And we can make activities that promote more social interaction. Where, for example, instead of just asking them to summarize something, we can ask other classmates to comment on what students have done, et cetera. Okay, uh, if there's a discussion board, encourage the learners to help one another. I was teaching a rather large linguistics class not too long ago, and I put up a, a discussion for Q&A where students could ask me questions 
but I don't want to be there 24 hours a day. And so I said, well, you know, go ahead. Everybody jump in. If you know the answer to a student's question, go ahead and answer it. And I found out after the first couple of weeks, I didn't have to answer many questions at all. They answered one another's questions much faster. <laughs> Sometimes at 3 a.m. they were in there answering each other's questions. And I think that's, that is the direction we should be going in, not having everything depend on the teacher. As I said, Hana, this is not new stuff. This is not new information. Okay, uh, if we do online discussions in the LMSs, we can give students options. And for example, what, how many posts do they have to do? What are the requirements? How can they reply? What kind of prompts do they have? Can you give them, do they have to answer every prompt or can you give them a choice? You could have synchronous discussions or asynchronous discussions. So let them have a voice in what they're doing. And I think they'll be much more engaged. Okay, uh, teach them how to use search tools. A lot of students don't know that. Uh, and if the more that they can go and find their own information, the less they're gonna be asking the teacher. Repetition, I know it's old fashioned, but it's really useful and encourage them to repeat. Okay, have them reflect on their own learning, have them do reports about what they're doing, have them do diaries, uh, just like the old fashioned writing journal. Uh, have them evaluate their own progress and get, get, their, get their reaction to how well they think they're doing. Uh, encourage them to take risks, encourage them not to be afraid to make mistakes. Okay, uh, encourage your students to take a break. Do you know this gulab, uh, uh, Indian snack? Stop once in a while for five minutes, eat a snack, take a walk, enjoy nature, but encourage them not to just sit in front of the computer screen all day, but to take breaks. And how long did that take me, Vance? About five minutes? Oh, That's basically it. Mute. Thanks for your attention. That's the web page. I'll try to figure out how to put the PowerPoint up. Uh, if I can't, send me an email. I'll be happy to send you the send PowerPoint. Send me the link, and I'll, if, if, well, if you have a link, then I can do that. A link to what? To if you here? put your PowerPoint in Google Slides, and then and usually okay. they go in. You can actually, yeah, and, you can actually import it to Google Slides. Sorry. Yes. That's okay. Yes, import yes. it. Yeah. yeah. That sounds like a lot of work, but I'll try. Oh, Claire, <laughs> just send it to me, and I can send it to them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm she has to do it herself, Mike. There. You can't. You just got to solve the problem. You know, she's got to be autonomous. Yeah. Uh, this will be my choice, my learner's choice. I'll, I'll try to do that. I'll, I'll make that the challenge. Okay. Well, Claire, you did really well on time. I'm going to say you started eight <laughs> minutes late. That was amazing. Okay, so what I'm going to try, uh, I see it's 12 after the hour now. I'm going to try to hand off to Mike around at half an hour. Uh, I, what I've done is I've I put all my stuff here. Uh, I got kind of PowerPointed out. So... Um, I'm going to, oh, here we are, advances part, that's me. Okay, so what, I've, what I'm going to do is, it's a nice little screen share here. Let me just get it down where I can, uh, you know, it's got that little floating thing where, right where my taskbar is here. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about blended learning as a precursor to emergency remote learning. What that really is, is that in my opinion, I've been doing blended learning for a long time, and some of my colleagues have too. Um, when you are comfortable with blended learning, that is you're going into face-to-face -face classes and you're creating, you know, you're using LMSs and you're, all the things that Claire talked about, uh, if you're actually doing that in your face-to-face -face classes, then you uh, are in much better position to go into an online environment. And I got, uh, I got to learn a lot about this as an English language specialist just recently. And, uh, what I did, I, I, I gave, I, I talked, I gave a, um, uh, let's see, let me, let me pop down to, uh, to this, this is the workshop that I gave, okay, and um, I did this face-to-face, -face, uh, several different workshops, one of them was on blended learning, and at the end of this, they had me do an online course, so the, I took it online from uh, mid-February to mid-March. And in, at the end of that, I, uh, I discovered the, the people who were really, you know, in my face-to-face -face classes, the people were not, you know, they were sort of normal people that you would think during a, 
uh, you know, they're taking your courses, you're standing in front of them, and they're, they're just there because they, they were told to come here. I mean, you know, they like it. If you're engaging, they like what you're doing, but they're not, they're not, it's not just in time for them. You know, it's, it's just something extra for them. But when they, in, in January to, to uh, February to March, when they took the online course, they started getting stuck into the fact that they had to, they couldn't go to real classes. They had to use some of these resources that I was telling them about. So I created this document here. This is it right here. I, uh, I'll show you how to reach its link. Uh, it's in the document that I just gave you. But basically this is a, uh, uh, what, what happens if, you're, uh, if your school decides that, you know, not to do, uh, you can't go back to school. And I've, what I do here is I put all of the learning together uh, things that I have. I, I keep that updated, like this morning I updated it. I update it almost every day. So people can come here and see like all the things that we're doing in this summit. They can see what uh, what's on, on an updated basis. And um, I've put in a, a, uh, um, a table of contents here. You can pop down and see what this table of contents points to. Uh, basically, stuff like this. I'm going to come down to where I've got my blog posts. Um, so you can see an example of some of the things that they link to. Um, what I want to get down to is the blog posts. Here they go. I, I could have just, I just wanted to show you through scrolling. So the blog posts, uh, my, the last ones I have are from September, but I've been collecting them all along, but there's a really a neat one here by uh, this guy, uh, A.J. Giuliani. I don't know if you've heard of him, but uh, this one struck me because it actually uh, gives you a, uh, it's a post about four engaging structures that work in hybrid learning classrooms. And it really reads kind of like a manual. Um, let's see, if I just scroll down a little bit, station, there's a station to station rotation model he explains like this, how you could organize hybrid learning, um, a flipped model, and etc. So if you're interested, you can have a look there. Uh, I'm going to pop over to uh, where I was over here. Okay, so actually I was over here. All right, so these are, these, this was part of my hybrid course, my, not my hybrid course, sorry, part of my blended learning course. And the front page that I showed you, which is here, uh, you can get to that resource if you pop down to the, oh, am I in the wrong place? Sorry about that. Let me just close that because it's in my way. What is that? Ah, close that. Okay, so on that front page is a sidebar and you can find, you can go there if you were on my page, which happens to be workshops2020.pbworks.com. So uh, another thing you can also link to from that page is my blended learning, my, my uh, um, the e-learning course that I was doing. So let me go scroll on down here. So the blended learning course was trying to model for teachers how to flip learning through using uh, the, the tools I was teaching in the, in the blended learning face-to-face -face course. And um, face-to-face -face course, you can see some of the tools that I was using. I've got them over here. So this is just uh, module two of my face-to-face uh, -face course. So you can see a lot of the tools I was covering. Um, uh, screen capture, uh, s screen uh, recorders, you know, things like that. So that kind of tool, you can see from the table of contents what they are. So if you, if you go to the document and click there, you'll see that. And also, as a part of this, I gave a plenary on flipped learning. And um, how did it get here? No, that's, oh, that's the, uh, no, how, how did I reach that space? Oh, okay. Let's go back to my, oh, we'll go to my, uh, my workshop page because it's here. The plenary is down here somewhere. Um, there's the plenary right there. I don't know how I put the wrong link there, but anyway, this is my plenary, my Thai T salt plenary, and um, it, it it was recorded. And there's a picture there of Jeff Lebo. I don't know if you know Jeff Lebo, but he was part of my 
online course, you know, you'll, you'll get a cohesive, uh, if you go to this document, you can see this more cohesively. But what Jeff told us was that um, in order to, um, let's see if I can find what he wrote, let's see, yes, here. Uh, Uh, here we go. So this, this is where I interviewed Jeff in my online course. It's one of the, uh, the webinars, which are also linked in there. So Jeff told me uh, about how, Jeff, Jeff is somebody I've known for a long time, and he's done something called World Bridges, where he's been doing webcasting with people, p teaching people how to webcast. And so he went to Pusan in Korea, and he's, he's doing cooking classes with his students. They, they come online, they talk about cooking, they show cooking to each other. It's, uh, he's just a natural at this kind of thing. So he, all the stuff he's doing is blended because he's meeting them face to face. But he was setting this all up for the department. So when they went into emergency remote teaching, he had it all set up for them. So he said, you just have to add Zoom. I don't know if that's really uh, a correct thing to say, but uh, that's what he said. Uh, so, uh, obviously, it's a simplification. But in my online courses, I told you there were uh, there's a uh, this is the um, that's the online course itself right here. Okay, so um, it, it has a Schoology page. I think yeah, I've got it open right here. Okay, so there's a Schoology page there, and uh, I, I ran it in Schoology. Um, let's see, in week three, that's week three, uh, yes, uh -huh, okay, in week three, nope, 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 that's my, go back to the front page, okay, so, um, week three, where is it? Week three, there we go, okay, so in that week, uh, I, people were starting to, uh, discover that they had uh, a, they, they had a problem with well they needed to use these tools and uh, use them themselves so uh, a lady named T Arjan Arjan means professor in Thai so she called herself Arjan T and she posted a tweet that said this she said heading for my family and kids in Italy this is my only hope of how to manage classes in Thailand all for the best so She's um, obviously was appreciative of things that she was learning. She's just one example of the people who were realizing that they had to, that this course was important for them. Um, there's, a, there's a hashtag. This is the blended learning hashtag that I set up for the course. So you can read other people's uh, uh, comments. Uh, let's see if I've got it set in the right way. This is the latest. No, yeah, latest. That's right. So... Um, I like it. Yeah, that's right. Okay, anyway. Um, so, let me pop back over here. Um, so, having carried forward this, um, uh, I was, what I was trying to do was carry the, once the course ended in mid-March, I wanted it to continue. I continued working at it. I continued in my mind. I put on the uh, the the um, um, you know the the, the uh, resources page that I put up. I put that up and I I maintained it, and I also went into something I called Talon, and the way I went into Talon was it was teaching and learning in isolation. Um, it uh, we started it. Because Michael Coughlin, one of my in my community of practice, he's one person who helped me start the Webheads community of practice in 2002, and he wanted to start, he wanted to get together with colleagues online, uh, as we did in the past. So uh, at that time, I was conceiving teaching and learning in the new normal, and uh, we have an archive of our webinars that uh, there were 38 of them that took place between um, March 30th and August 9th. They're all recorded. So oh, the lady, this lady here, uh, 
um, Minnie Wang is going to be talking after our session. She's doing a talk here. Um, anyhow, so you, you can see all of these recorded, but they're really a part of learning together, which is, let me just go to learning together here. Learning together is something I've been doing since uh, 2020, uh, sorry, 2010, since 2010. And uh, there's, you can see all the past events archived at this page. And let's see if you get one to pop down to, uh, these are the most recent this year. Oh, by the way, something that uh, Claire said about um, um, engaging students in online environments, SOFLA is something that, that really does that. Uh, let's see, I'll just search on SOFLA here. We've had several episodes, episodes about it. Um, let me just, because Elaine Marshall started, uh, she's done a lot of writing on SOFLA. So we have some interesting uh, episodes here where we've been demonstrating SOFLA, synchronous online flipped learning approach, which is a way of engaging your students in online environments. So, but uh, this is all from 2020. All of these are linked with uh, 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 links to the recordings in the learningtogether.net page. And our very first one actually was in 2009, uh, but we weren't really doing it then. We did. We were calling it speed geeking back then. But in 2010, we also we put on some. Uh, the 2010. Let's see. Uh, you can. So anyway, been all of these are recorded, blogged somewhere. Here's one of the early ones. Uh, Heike Phillips showing us education in Second Life. So most of them are recorded with videos, uh, especially the latest ones. Okay, so anyhow, getting back to Talon, um, that's really kind of the last thing I wanted to bring up. I'm keeping my eye on the clock, because, we're, and we're segging into Mike's part. So Talon is something that uh, my cat came up with. Uh, but what I did, after the 38 lessons, I noticed that uh, we had at the first, we had a lot of people applying, maybe two a week, three a week, and then we started tapering off where it was, people, people weren't, I wasn't really going out and recruiting so much, a little bit, but not so much, but people were offering to do them, but people were tapering off a bit. So what this kind of showed me was that they were no longer so concerned about emerg emergency remote teaching. And okay, we've talked about that, we've helped each other, now we're ready to go into what I call Talent Squared, which is teaching and learning in the new normal. And I haven't really done a lot with that. I stopped, uh, all these episodes are learning together episodes. This episode right now that we're doing is episode 494. And um, uh, anyhow, I think teaching and learning in the new normal has a lot more to do with uh, what Mike is going to talk about because that's really how things have, or how things are shaping up. I don't know, Mike, what do you think? Is that a good start for you? I think um, your, uh, your input and Claire's input and the conference's input is a, a good start for me. Um, I believe that um, all around, um, it's a, an amazing job of uh, all the educators coming together and grouping together and sharing their uh, uh, giving input and sharing the information be, uh, between each other all around the world, you know that that has absolutely amazed me. It's uh, simply awesome. I'm uh, I've been around in education for the past twenty years, but I've only actually just come out of my shell from Lesbos Island. I live on a really small island in the North Aegean Sea. I've only just come out of my shell because I accidentally bumped into a couple of. Um, uh, people online and they told me about PSOL, PSOL Greece and a couple of years back uh, I went to one of their conferences um, and I was just blown away of, of uh, meeting other educators, passionate educators that are open to sharing, that are open to giving and, and connecting and, and then I started learning about um, personal learning networks and started opening it up a bit. Um, just to mention, uh, I think it was the year before I was the uh, 
the winner of the Lefterios Corbus um, uh, yearly scholarship for the TESOL, because right? I could see George Corbus in the uh, uh, here in the audience. Um, after that, I uh, connected with a couple of people from ITEFL, became an ITEFL member. Uh, along the way, I met Van, and yeah, Van has been just a huge influence uh, on me and to me, and the way he, you know, he believes in connectivism and, and sharing and, and becoming a better educator through other educators and, and so on and so forth. Um, about three years ago, I bumped into online. I'm from Lesbos Island. I bumped into Van Stevens from the Oregon University and uh, Car Carolina Rodriguez, um, uh, Martha Ramirez. Jeff Magoto? Uh, uh, Jeff Magoto, yeah. Uh, you said Van Stevens. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> Jeff Magoto. You're an influence. You're an influence <laughs> to me, yeah? <laughs> uh, uh, on me. Um, and so, um, as a, a student of uh, uh, Electronic Village Online of uh, the Flip Learning in Language Teaching. A couple of years back, I ended up becoming a moderator. So this is my second year of becoming a, a moderator, and um, that's been a, a you know a life change for me. Getting into Flip Learning and learning about active learning strategies, and um, and touching on what Claire said, um, trying to get young learners because my teaching context is all ages but it's mostly about young learners um, so I get uh, in my my little school I get uh, students um, from very young uh, ages um, first first grade second grade um, I do also have teenagers and then I have um, um, exam classes with Cambridge uh, uh, Cambridge assessment um, and all the way up to you know English for academic purposes, English for specific purposes, and so on and so forth. My first, my background is uh, electronic electrical engineering. Um, I'm a Loughborough University UK student or graduate. Um, came back to the island. Um, I, you know, I was born and bred in Melbourne, Australia. So I came to Greece and Europe with a, a TFL certificate, um, started teaching, fell in love with it, couldn't get off it. Um, I came to Lesbos Island to do a postgrad on cultural informatics, uh, loved the island, um, ended up staying here. So I've been here for quite a while, um, did a PhD here on the island at Lesbos University. So let's, uh, let's get back to the, the topic and connect it. Uh, with everything we've seen so far, yeah, okay. Um, well, um, touching on what uh, Claire said about autonomous learning, uh, for me, if um, my lifelong uh, um, goal, I would say, my objective is, you know, I'm trying to get my students empowered, even the young ones. I want them to become autonomous learners because when we get them. We give them, everyone knows that, if we give them um, sources and resources that is relevant and meaningful and purposeful for them, they'll not only create for you, but they'll also start creating for themselves. And I'll, I'll tell you what I'm talking about in a minute. Um, and one of my biggest uh, bets is how do you get uh, young learners responsible for their own learning? Yeah, how do you get like, you know, second, third, fourth graders uh, um, saying that I want to leave your classroom, I'm motivated enough, I'm engaged enough to uh, leave your classroom and um, do something for myself and, and uh, advance my language skills. Um, going back into moving away from face-to-face uh, -face classes now with the, uh, the COVID uh, pandemic and um, what I tend to tell all my colleagues who ask me is, don't just mirror your face-to-face -face classes. Um, you have to plan differently. You have to change. Um, and if you're still doing it, move away from just passive learning and start getting into some active learning, changing your approach. Um, by active learning, um, I always uh, like um, a quote from Errol St. Clair Smith, from the Flip Learning Global, you know. Um, I believe that uh, 
flipped learning is it obviously it's an active learning strategy, but I, we say that flipped learning is a meta strategy where we connect all the other active learning strategies in class. So um, having an environment of um, some students in your classroom, some students at home, uh, it's very difficult because my teaching context is like I have students uh, two times a week, um, maybe one, one and a half, two hours for each session. So uh, if we're talking about K-12, uh, it's a totally different ball game. Uh, I believe what uh, Vance said uh, and Claire that um, we can't just mirror our face-to-face -face classes and get K-12 students from uh, you know, 8.30 in the morning all the way to lunchtime sitting in front of a screen. It's not possible. So obviously there we have to balance out um, our synchronous classes, short synchronous time uh, with a, a large, more larger asynchronous space. Um, so here, though, some of the strategies we use in class and we try to incorporate for our hybrid lessons are um, a lot of this differentiation. Um, we sometimes have to differentiate all the types of learners we have in our class, having different learner styles. That could mean uh, preparing um, different types of um, activities using um, uh, in-class flip or um, uh, mastery learning, uh, using different kind of um, workstation work, which could be some workstations could be just straight on the PC or um, in the computer lab or having their own tablets in front of them. Some work could mean from the course book. Some work could mean with the, uh, the teacher. Uh, good. And at the center, we have flipped learning. Great. Another thing that I picked up from um, Flip Learning Global is to, uh, when we're talking about um, a synchronous and synchronous work, you have to find a balance in uh, levering the, the work you have uh, maybe asynchronously and the work you do synchronously. And um, one of the things I really like and I really aim for using Bloom's taxonomy, it's a good thing to do most of the uh, low-level, low-order thinking skills uh, uh, on the asynchronous time. Um, it could be um, reading an article, it could be watching a video, uh, having an understanding stage, having a small quiz stage, putting in accountability, applying it, maybe in language, uh, language course could have some um, some um, language skills like grammar skills and you could apply it there uh, and then when you come to class have the the more higher order of skills where you're analyzing a topic you're uh, evaluating maybe a story you're talking about it maybe you're trying to get them to create a new story using uh, a Google Doc I'll try to be short and sweet and maybe show some um, things I do practically which is quite interesting, I think. Um, you know, uh, a lot of uh, synchronous learning platforms, uh, the mainstream ones are there, like Zoom and, and Microsoft Teams, uh, Google Meet, um, um, and so on and so forth, you know, GoToMeeting. But uh, when you choose uh, organizational synchronous platform, make sure they have breakout rooms, because, you know, breakout rooms are at the heart of pair work and and small group work and preparing for your um, activities um, because you know for one thing for example Google Meet you have to have the paid version the G Suite uh, educational version or the paid version to actually use it great um, hybrid hybrid in my context hybrid in my context for me face-to-face uh, -face classes yeah okay uh, maybe it's a bit cliche what I'm going to say but I, I really believe that you can't really replace the teachers. You can't really replace the contact uh, that you build with face-to-face -face, um, classes. So the way uh, our school sees hybrid class, our school sees hybrid classes as a, a direct solution of the COVID pandemic or a direct solution of uh, a child, a young learner or a learner that can't make it to class. Yeah, it could be a reason that it's raining heavily. It could be a reason he, uh, because uh, someone's got a, um, a cough. 
It could be like a, a small cough, but you know, nowadays a cough could be connected straight away to um, COVID symptoms and you're better off staying at home, but don't lose the lesson. Connect. Um, this is quite cool. I wanted to show you really quickly, just a couple of seconds. Um, we had a case where one of our teachers had a symptom um, and we didn't know how to handle it. Um, uh, eventually, it was just a, a, a bad tooth and it was actually, you know, uh, it was due to having something else. But we made her stay home until she got it sorted out. And here's a, a last minute where we had the teacher at home and we had the, the, the teacher assistant help and, oops, sorry, and um, it actually worked out quite well. He was just using it. Great. Um, and then there's the case of tools and tools and more tools and tools. And this is the next part of the uh, conversation I want to have with building autonomous learners, using hybrid solutions, choosing tools out there. Um, just before I do that, um, you know, English language learners, um, a lot of um, Lexus building, vocabulary quizzes, a lot of quizzes, games out there. I just wanted to show um, one of my favorites. One of my favorites is, I, I've got absolutely no commercial connection with this one, uh, is Gimkit. Um, and this is a, uh, a, a group work where we've actually connected the Zoom class and we've got a couple of students at home and a couple of students in class. And we used this as a brain break for about 15 minutes where they were uh, just um, revising some topic vocabulary. And I really enjoyed it. This was like two days ago. And it was sort of a little game where they're competing against the lava challenge. They're competing against here are my students. And basically, um, it's more game oriented and kids like everything to do with game um, and using game-based activities, gamification um, actually really helps, you know, even older students. So having all these tools during COVID and even before COVID, um, because of my, you know, tech background, I was using long ago, you know, Moodle platforms and, and uh, a lot of other such tools. Um, so, and one of my options, one of the problems that I was faced uh, even before COVID is how can we connect? You know, one of the first things we do in class is build report. Uh, report. So how do we actually connect to our students having an online environment? Is that actually possible? Can we actually do that? Um, so I started you know, investigating how can I get them connected uh, and keep them engaged in their learning even after my class. Um, so yeah, it's all about having an LMS, it's all about having a communication channel, it's all about getting them involved and using active learning strategies. Um, but as you know, as Dalton Durney once meant, uh, recently mentioned um, in one of his books about engagement with Sarah Mercier, uh, you know, motivation is necessary for preparing the deal. But engagement is indispensable for sealing the deal. So basically, uh, he says that uh, um, you can use all these bells and whistles to get your students motivated in learning, but how can you keep them from not going into oblivion as soon as they walk out the door with their gaming and their YouTubing and their, their TikTok and, and every other thing that every other thing they're bombarded with, which is a lot more interesting. Um, so basically, after using a lot of commercial tools, I actually sat down and made my own. Um, and really quickly, in just a couple of minutes, I just want to show you, there's a lot of open tools there. Um, and basically, I wanted to have something like a, a digital classroom, uh, Google Classroom. I'm a private educator, so I was not eligible for um, uh, Google, uh, um, uh, a Google education license, as I'm not eligible for Microsoft education license and being a really small school that really cost me. Um, I also needed a, a learning management system 
and um, yeah, Google Classroom. Oh no, sorry, um, Schoolology and Canvas and uh, Class Dojo, uh, Edmondo, uh, 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 types of uh, learning management systems. That was quite cool. But then I started getting all my students. We're talking about young learners here, and I started getting all my students a little bit mixed up with their usernames and passwords. And here, take a username password for that that uh, activity. And here, take a username and password for that activity. And then I wanted somewhere where to have a student portfolio, have all their work come together. And as Claire mentioned, I want I wanted the use of discussion boards uh, for some you know higher order thinking and reflecting, and the use of it and of um, and the use of the, such boards for maybe for exit slips and stuff like that. And then. I wanted to build a community platform and a messaging system, like I've seen on a few um, iPeple site and uh, a few online conferences where they've got their own uh, uh, WordPress site and they've got a BuddyPress underneath and stuff like that. So, really quickly, you know, time's up, but really quickly, um, I built something on WordPress. Um, uh, We've gamified it, so we've got our houses this year, and all our students are broken up into houses, and we've got our... Dear students, it has been a very difficult year here in Kadoo land. And we've got... Ever since Demotivate gained access to the teleportal... And we've got this parallel dimension where the evil Demotivate is trying to conquer the world, and trying to get into our, in our classrooms. Um, um, moving along really quickly, Here's the community connection, and you know, if I just go through here, it's Saturday afternoon here in you know Lesbos. I've actually got students connected, um, and things are happening, and they're connecting with each other. There's a way of connecting with friendships and changing avatars. Um, uh, we've got a messaging system. Um, we're uploading our Flipgrid and our book reviews. Um, and then each classroom has got their own um, personal space. Here's a very young learner space. We had a session. Um, I told them to write an email and send it through our messaging service. So it's a protected environment. We're off uh, uh, Facebook Messenger and Google and Viber and and all these other you know open exposed platforms. So uh, we have our safe environment. Um, finishing off, um, here's a, uh, a word cloud that they built in one of the uh, C2 level classes uh, where they revised some vocabulary. Uh, here's our uh, Google Doc, open Google Doc, um, a couple of worksheets. Moving on, um, here's a discussion panel where we post most of our exit splits. Um, things like, you know, we talked about 21st century skills, so I got them who actually created this idea and why and, and you know go out and inquire about the issue and write your ideas here um, you know artificial intelligence do you believe about the artificial intelligence um, so what I'm saying is um, there are ways of building your own space easily and cheaply um, my feedback is you know it gets when everything starts running this actually really picked up, and I had problems with the, the web hosting company. I had to move another plan, and then to another plan, and then to another plan. So eventually, I got um, I've got about uh, another five or six schools here in Greece involved, and they helped me. Um, um, they, they built their own as well, so we actually got a shared plan, which is quite good. Here's a learning management system. Uh, in the learning management system, we use a tool, a tool called Five HP. Uh, that's an open platform where you can embed videos. Um, Cedric Diggory was my This was just a, a YouTube video where we're, we're talking about passive voice, and this was a flip learning. This, this was this they had to do it at home, and basically at home, um, they watched the video. Mm, and basically, oh, there you uh, go. I and know you've heard of the passive <laughs> and so on and so forth, where the video stops and they get questions, they get accountability questions. And activities. Um, then there's a certain quiz. Um, moving on, I'm finishing. Oh, um, we embed. We embed now our uh, the links. We embed it inside using um, 
iframe embedding tool so they don't actually have to go outside um, we make our own flashcards he, short short yeah um, we use our own you know recovery lectures and oh we make our own flashcard uh, matching yeah. games um, and so on and so forth yeah sure call the office anytime that's 213-456-9789. And so on and so forth, yeah? Anytime um, at 213-456-9789. Uh, just finishing off, for me, it's about uh, connecting and engaging your students to become to becoming autonomous learners and um, using uh, digital tools really helps. Um, but a lot of work has to be done with your learners, a lot of uh, conversation and discussions and uh, about taking on the responsibility because, you know, they could ha we could have our learners there and say, yes, 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 yeah, yeah. And as soon as they leave the, the school, they'll be bombarded with something else and they'll forget. And when they get home and, and the parent says, what do, you have for, what do you have to do for, you know, your study, for your homework, George? Uh, I'm not sure. And... And then they have to go online and investigate it. Whereas, uh, if they know how to log on, they've learnt it, and they take on the responsibility. All they have to do is just log on, go into the classroom, look at what they got, do some stuff, get prepared for the class. Uh, uh, maybe even flip it and have the the um, the remembering stage outside of the class. Come to class and do more interesting stuff. Okay. I was trying to be really short there. <laughs> to the point. You were right. You're like one minute over the oh. end of the session. That's perfect. I mean, the three of us, we are timekeepers. We are really, uh, I'm waiting for correct congratulations from the uh, supervisors here. <laughs> While I'm waiting, I'll put this uh, link to Lane Marshall's uh, paper on SOFLA which has a neat chart in it which shows how it has eight steps and one of them is uh, going into uh, uh, the, the rooms, the, what do you call them? Breakout rooms. Breakout rooms, thank you. Yeah, it has breakout rooms and it has uh, uh, all kinds of, you can look at the article and you can find the charts and read the article and it's very interesting about how uh, so far, you're probably familiar with that. I, Lane was a, a moderator of the flipped learning session, whose link I put course, up earlier. Yeah. yeah, so you, you yeah. were... You and were, I think she had a session yesterday here. Uh, Anna, is that right? No, it was uh, Heike. Heike oh, yeah. had a brand... Right. Heike, movie. Philip talked about the software, is that right? She has That's been, right. yes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. She was experimenting with a certain idea she had in mind, like adapting software mm -hmm. in one yeah. way or another. So uh, it's her first time to go live with a, in a conference setting. So that was yesterday. And we had a lot of fun doing, uh, you know, work with her yesterday. Thank you very much for an amazing uh, panel and for sharing so many uh, impressive ideas. Um, I, I had some comments in the chat box here. Um, and people are saying like, I think it's a million thumbs up. I can't count the zeros here. Mm, yeah, I learned a lot. Uh, yeah, double infinity. Oh, wow. Yeah. People are simply uh, impressed here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, of course, for sharing uh, the links, uh, very quick links. And then we can sort of like refer back to yeah, Vance's uh, curated documents. I mean, he's so accurate about, you know, curating stuff and putting that in the right order. Without him, my my whole, uh, you know, idea would have been messy. I mean, thank you, Vance, for that. Um, I've asked myself here a couple of questions. Um, so maybe, yes, um, you work, Mike, here. That's okay. I'm addressing Mike uh, because he talked about uh, you know, young learners, and it's like that's the main age group you work with, Mike, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Reports from around uh, fellow teachers in Egypt, um, school teachers. 
uh, those working with very young learners and young learners. Well, they report that it didn't work for them. Remote learning failed tremendously with that age group. Um, what about your experience? Um, you you run a private center, not the yes. school in the formal so center. It's, it's a lot less hours. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, uh, but my experience say that uh, back in March, March 11th, the Greek government announced that we're going into total lockdown. Um, because I had this platform open and we were using it quite a bit, um, I just announced on the platform that uh, as of March 12th, we start our we continue our classes online. The only thing that's going to change is a Zoom link or a, a Jitsi Meet link we have as well, and. Um, basically, our most uh, avid supporters were the young learners. They really enjoyed it. They really liked it because um, we made sure um, they were actively involved. And, you know, a lot of people say, you know, you're going to put uh, young learners in breakout rooms. Aren't you going to get the Beavis and butt head effect? You know, uh, 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 and stuff like that. Yeah. You do, but that's part of the fun. But And then as you're going into the different breakout rooms and you automatically see, it's like, oh my, they're speaking English. They're actually involved. They're using it and they're interested. And then that's when you start saying, wow. Um, but I think during uh, a crisis and having crisis management solutions, uh, a, lot, a lot had to do with um, uh, the sense of belonging and being sticking together and connecting with the, your teachers and, and connecting and, and being safe and all that. So uh, they took on a lot of responsibility and a lot of pressure, the young learners I'm talking about, um, too. And um, it worked quite well. Um, active learning, uh, gaming, making it interesting, um, uh, a lot of asynchronous work afterwards with just quizzes and, and uh, um, 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 on class, I'm just trying to think of the way as I'm speaking as well. A lot of scavenger hunts using home materials um, and that type of activities to keep them involved and keep them active and getting producing the language. Sounds interesting, but in our case, like um, because they were um, assigned like project work and asynchronous work. Uh, parents ended up doing the work for the kids just to ensure the kids would like get scores and I mean you know yeah 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 has the courses and you know get high scores whatever whatever that means it's mm -hmm. just like the kids were not involved enough and you don't have mm -hmm. direct supervision you know asynchronously how can you tell this is the work yeah. of the kid himself or herself and not the work of some adult trying to assist? Um, well, I suppose a lot of um, questioning and differentiate your, 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 the level of questioning that you do uh, on your, uh, your synchronous session. Um, for me, um, uh, even if they get help on, you know, little, sorry, being specific, little present, simple, little activities and quizzes at home, even if they, the parents do it, they're going to come to class and we're going to talk about routines and we're going to talk about this, and how they're going to cope, how they're going to handle it. It's going to be, yeah, and once we start putting pair work and, and, and small group work, they're going to be, they're going to be feeling, the, you know, feeling the anxiety of not being able to, to participate. So, um, but yeah, we do, we do have these types of cases. So a lot of scaffolding and differentiating is needed there. Interesting. And how can you know that kids by nature are kinesthetic more than anything? And they wouldn't stay still for long hours, okay? So the question is, how can you do kinesthetic activities and, you know, kind of work scavenger hunts and stuff? Okay. And um, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's it. It's like involve them, like, you know, physically. Okay, um, guys, I want you uh, to quickly run around your house and find me something yellow. Can you find me something yellow? The, you know, um, um, let's play Mr. Mike Says. Everybody stand up. 
Sit Dance, down. Dance is finding something yellow here. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> hey. Okay, Ben. You get you get one hundred credit points. Yay. You're, you're, uh, yeah, can I, you're supporting can I, your Thunderfox yeah, clan. Well can done. Can I transfer that to time on Kedu? Can I do that? Yeah. Yes, of oh, course. Okay. Of course, yeah. All right, I'll hold you to I'll it. I'll even give you a badge. All right. Um, Vance, you asked about the uh, name of a game uh, that uh, Mike was referring to, and we couldn't catch that uh, I think name. it was Gimkit. I think he said that... Gimkit, Gimkit.com, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. He was using Gimkit. It's, it was it's been made by... Uh, uh, a 17-year-old uh, student in the States, and um, wow. yeah, and he started off a, a spin-off company, and I think he's about 19, 20 now, and, and just the games that he brings out are so awesome, and um, it, I could actually say that it's making it really more interesting, um, but you know, you, there's a lot of stuff out there like Quizlet, and Quizzes, and Quizalize, and Socrative, and so on and so forth. Can I, can I say something? Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah, there's a cool little app called Zigazoo. I just put the link in the uh, chat box. And basically, it's it's set, it's very much like Mike was saying. Find something yellow. Uh, it's little pro, little research projects you can do. It has links to various uh, resources like museums. And the young kids go there and they get some information and they make a small video and they share the video in the LMS. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Have you What's ever? Sorry, uh, go ahead, Mike. Have you ever figured out how we can create virtual tours to some place like a museum? I mean, I know there is such stuff online, like virtual tours to a museum. You go and, you know, Madame Tussauds kind of, you know, yeah, music. Or Google, Google Expeditions as well is a great tool. Uh, is that is that for free or is that like, um, you know, com uh, with subscription? Not much of it's free. I, I haven't. I haven't mm -hmm. uh, stumbled upon a uh, something to pay for Google it's exhibition. Not, it, I mean, that could maybe add a little bit of cultural knowledge, get them to go and find stuff, go and visit stuff. I don't know when I'm just off the top of my yeah. head. <laughs> having a, a 360 camera, oh, having a, you can make your own, that. and you know, even like the tools I mentioned before, you should really check this out. This is um, I got this from. Uh, 5hp.org. They're mm -hmm. open platform tools and you can install it on uh, school servers or university servers and run it or private servers. Um, that's got a tool where you just throw in your um, 360 uh, photos and you can make your own um, um, like a, a walkthrough and stuff like that. Yeah. Sounds interesting. Uh, Claire, you, um, you actually shared some of the very important ideas it's like, you know, things like that might sound uh, old techniques, but actually they work at this point in time still. Well, I'm very old, so naturally I have old ideas. By the way, thanks to, thanks to Vance and Mike's encouragement, I, wa I was able to make a Google Slides out of the PowerPoint, and I linked yeah. it. To yeah, I'm, I'm kind of lazy, but anyway, it's No, done. you're not. No, My you're husband not. helped me. <laughs> well, good for you. Um, I remember the, the nice techniques. Uh, you're specialized in writing, kind of like training, academic writing training and teacher training. So how have you, or I think you've had a group of trainees that you've worked with lately, right? Am I right in that assumption? Or are you talking to me? Yes, yes, Claire. Well, um, <laughs> mostly what I've been doing recently, oh, I've been trying to not get the virus. That's my main. Oh. My main thing, but I've been doing webinars for our teachers in India. I did about four in the last few weeks, and I'm going to do one in two weeks with a group of teachers in Bangladesh. So virtual. Uh, how yeah. has, uh, okay, you've, you haven't done that before. Um, yeah. You prefer the face-to-face -face interaction kind of teacher training, right? Well, I, I do, yes. I, I, you know, Mike referred to that, you know, there is something about the traditional face to face that uh, I enjoy, but it's exciting to do. It's exciting to do stuff online to realize, my God, 1200 people have registered for this webinar. 900 people actually showed up for the webinar. You know, that's hard to do in a traditional classroom. Yeah. 
Yeah. Of course. And they're so, from lots of different countries, including countries where I'm not allowed to go and from countries that are not allowed to come, people are not allowed to come to the United States. And that to me is very, uh, very exciting. That's, very that's a good thing. You know, we're transcending some of these artificial boundaries. Really sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, I can't really thank you enough. Vance, would you like to make some closing comments here? Um, well, gosh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we <laughs> you can go to our uh, web page, which is, uh, what did I say? It's tinyurl.com. Uh, what did I call it? Vance? No, no, uh, Summit 2020 Panel. Summit 2020 Panel. You can uh, be sure you go there to... Uh, find out. We, we, we might put more information in there. I might put some of this text chat in there. So, um, yeah, this is, uh, uh, I haven't worked with Mike before, We, uh, but I, I'm really impressed with his work and I hope uh, we can get him on learning together soon and talk more about it. And Claire, I've known for a very long time. Uh, very long time. Very <laughs> long time, yeah. We're old <laughs> friends and we've also yes. known each other for a long time. And we're also old. <laughs> old is gold. Yeah. And thank you again for joining yeah. us in this amazing panel. Yeah. Our uh, I just want to thank Vance and Claire for uh, inviting me. and It was a really great pleasure. And I, I would just say uh, to all the teachers out there is you know, look after yourself. Uh, because now that this, this, uh, this, um, thing that just came out of nowhere you know there's a lot of advantages as Claire said but uh, now that you're bombarded with all these resources you know for teacher training I'm talking about and connecting and stuff you know you have to filter and decide and choose and do it slowly because for, you know personally it's like I'm bombarded and I want to do this and I want to do that and you know if I don't start choosing and specializing I, I'll lose it so look after yourselves first take I breaks that's a very good point. One thing that's been hard for me to learn is how to say no. <laughs> so, no, I can't do that. I don't have time. Yeah, it's hard. A very good reminder. Yeah, we don't really have to do everything. Thank you very much for the reminder. Yeah, thank you. And that is the end of our first panel. And we got two more to go. Hope you are able to join us later today. Um, Thank you very much again from the bottom of my heart. Well, thank Claire, you very much. Uh, I'm going to thank you. go have some dinner. It's about 10 o'clock here. And I know. Probably, yeah, probably. Dinner calls. Okay, I know. I well, know. I know. I, I might <laughs> say good night. I think I'm going to hang out for Minnie's presentation. Minnie Wang, who's coming up, and uh, she's been coming to our webhead sessions lately. And uh, May I ask you to check out, because I've been trying to help her for the past hour, would you kindly check with her? I'm not really sure why she cannot log. I mean, I've been sharing the link with her mm -hmm. and everything, but for some funny reason, it's not working for her. I'll sort that out in the morning.